Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shifts and Pucks News Pack for Thursday, June the 23rd. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter at Shifts and Pucks, Facebook.com Shifts and Pucks, YouTube.com Shifts and Pucks, Twitch.com Shifts and Pucks. Subscribe wherever you get your audio, as well as on the Area 51 Sports Network, as missed a couple of days, had a few other things going on. We did a pretty deep dive into the news, though, on Tuesday. We had our podcast with Sean, Chris, and I digging into the news of the day. But uh, we'll be recapping the finals here and getting into a little bit of the Memorial Cup as well. And, of course, some coaching you. So let's start with the Stanley Cup final last night. Uh, the best game of the series, certainly, I think, last night. Uh, but the And a lot of controversy. There's a lot to talk about here uh, between Colorado and Tampa Bay. And started early for Tampa Bay, 36 seconds in. Anthony Sorelli dumps it in. Uh, pots at home. And, of course, the big question is who do you start in Colorado after that blowout win for Tampa Bay in Game 3 that got them to 2-1, to one, but uh, didn't look good at the beginning uh, there. Uh, shots on goal 17-4 to four favoring Tampa. I mean, it, it wasn't that Colorado looked horrendous, but Tampa was taking control of the series. But I think that coming away with only a one nothing lead after one period for Tampa... I think, in part, cost them the game. I think if you were Tampa, you would have wanted to get a couple of more goals there to build yourself a nice lead. And it just because then the Colorado Avalanche got another power play goal. That has been another part, part of the story of this. Their power play has been clicking this series. Nathan McKinnon from Ranton and McCarr at 517. And then Victor had been backhanded one in that I think Kemper would like to have back. And Tampa Bay comes into the... Third period leading two to one. And then Andrew Cogliano scores early in the third to tie it from Nico Sturm and Darren Helm. Just back to that McKinnon goal. Some thought that Landis Hogg touched it. He clearly did not. McKinnon rightly got credit for that. And that was his first goal of the series there. Um, but it's been their depth in Colorado that has been doing it. And then we head to overtime, and that's where all of this controversy comes in. Nazem Kadri. Two weeks ago, Nazem Kadri had surgery on his wrist. It looked like the series was was over or his season was over. Um, in terms of the play, the actual play, the actual hockey play that Nazem Kadri did, that was a great entry into the zone, a great shot. The a la Patrick Kane uh, back when... Uh, 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 there, uh, which by the way, good call out by Jeff Merrick. Do you know that this is the anniversary of Patrick Kane being drafted number one in the National Hockey League yesterday? On that day, Nazem Kadri scores a Patrick Kane like winning goal. No one, knew, no one knew where the puck was, and then so the Colorado Avalanche come away with the three to two overtime win in the three one series win lead right now. Uh, so. Colorado could wrap up the series on Friday, but then this gets deeper. So we're all admiring Nazem Kadri coming back from wrist surgery to get this winning goal. What a story. Lo and behold, John Cooper holds a press conference last night at the availability, uh, media availability, uh, walks out in the middle of it, says you, you will look at the goal and you'll see, and we should still be playing. Colorado had too many players on the ice. Nathan McKinnon was clearly um, on the ice. You could clearly see it. It is. It was a missed call. I know Tampa Bay had seven players on before. There was a whole mess in this entire situation. So I guess you could argue either way if you wanted to. But um, I felt for John Cooper at that moment. This is a team that has won two straight Stanley Cups. This is a team... Like, just look at what Tampa, Steven Stamkos was unbelievable last night, blocking shots. Andre Vasilevsky, just no, he does not deserve any criticism. He's made a great, just before that, made a great save on a breakaway from Logan O'Connell. Co Logan O'Connor, Colorado was taking the play to them. 17-4, remember 17-4 first period shots on goal? Tampa Bay ended up out shooting them 39-37. to So by, by that math, they outshot. Colorado outshot Tampa Bay for the rest of the way, 34 to 22. Uh, so uh, Vasilevsky deserves a ton of credit. Eric Chernak, Chernak got hurt and came back. Uh, Andy Sorelli got hurt and came back. Braden Point is just, just 
the Tampa Bay Lightning have been through enough, and you could just feel for John Cooper at that moment. It is a missed call. There is no question about it. But um, the you know what? I think you also look for Tampa Bay. You look back in that first period. You're out shooting Colorado seventeen to four, and you don't stretch that lead out. Um, I think one guy that deserves a lot of credit for last night. He was not a star uh, in the game. Uh, it was is is Darcy Kemper. Kemper kept them in the game when Tampa was put it on. Like the head been goal, I think you would like to have back for sure. But uh, I think he kept stood his ground there. He made an unbelievable save at Rob on Ryan McDonough in the third period that people will forget about. Um, Tampa Bay did have their chances. Kemper stood his ground and allowed Colorado to get that win. So he deserves some credit. Uh, just Colorado and now over time just got their, their uh, legs under them and their full marks. The Colorado Avalanche right now are the better team than the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, I did pick Tampa to win. It's going to be hard for them to win three, three in a row against Colorado, uh, especially going back to a very uh, incredible crowd in Denver, an underrated crowd in Denver that is sealed and ready to celebrate their first Stanley Cup win in 21 years uh so that will be interesting but we'll see the tampa bay uh, lightning are the two-time stanley cup champions they may have a little bit more fight in them but we'll we'll see it's going to be interesting there so colorado game four three games to one let us know what you think about that uh some coaching news of course happened as well that we wanted to catch up on the florida panthers have decided to go with Paul Maurice as their head coach uh, after they went through an exhaustive due diligence search, I think. We discussed that on the podcast on Tuesday. It looked odd, but it was due diligence. And you do that due diligence because A, Andrew Burnett is an interim coach. B, Florida has not beaten Tampa in two years. And, of course, you lose Joel Quenville. Um, and you're not able to hire General Quenville back. You're still, uh, and by the way, rightly so, he's got some answers there. To He's got some an- answers to some questions involving the Kyle Beach situation. So I'm not saying that Joel Quenville should be allowed back in, although there's indication that Florida really wanted to get him back. But they decided to go with the veteran Paul Maurice, who led Winnipeg to the conference finals uh, back in 2018. Uh, 2019, sorry, uh, and or sorry, 2018. Pardon me. The uh, he's been successful. Um, this might be a team with a lot of offensive skill that Maurice would be a good connection with, with with the Barkos and the Huberdos, and the, the developing Sam Bennett g- continuing to grow, and a lot of that offense uh, there in Florida. Highly skilled team, similar to that Winnipeg Jets team. He might be able to take them over the hump. It's it's an awkward situation, and I think Andrew Burnett should get a job. I think it would be if I'm Chicago that my phone is ringing for Andrew Burnett, but um, interesting there. So that is what's going on there. So Paul Maurice, new coach in Florida uh, there. We also, of course, had the awards go down. And the, of course, Hart went to Austin Matthews. Lindsay went to Austin Matthews. Vesna went to Igor Shosturkin. Uh, Norris went to Kale McCarr, although Roman Yossi had more first place votes. And Calder went to Maurice Sider. So that was all announced there, those awards. Uh, Keenan Thompson did a pretty good job uh, hosting that, I thought. I thought he was quite funny. Um wouldn't mind seeing him back. Thought it was great touch that Chris Snow presented an award, the Norris Road War to Calgary and Kale McCarr. Thought it was a nice touch that they had Nata- the Kraken fan doctor Natalia with Bruce Red Hamilton from the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, of course, remember that uh, story early in the year when uh, uh, the Kraken fan noticed that the red assist on the back of Hamilton's neck. I thought that was a good touch. It was a pretty good award so- show. Um, the controversy, some controversy coming out of Edmonton because Connor McDavid did not appear on five ballots. Uh, so some Oiler 
reporters are a little upset about that. To me, you could there were ten people you probably could vote for a heart that at least should have gotten one vote. I think wouldn't have been surprising. You had your first tier, which was Gaudreau, Huberto, Matthews, McDavid, and Shesterkin. Then you had some people that were thinking Kaprizov, Yossi, Makar were probably in there. Some had Hovechkin. Jason Robertson got some votes. The person I was a bit disappointed that didn't get a vote was Sidney Crosby. I re- I felt Sidney Crosby's year, um, although he didn't finish uh, up there in terms of any points or anything like that. I thought he had a great year. Uh, he missed the first part of the year. He got Pittsburgh gro- uh, going again. I, I just think that Sidney Crosby had a very underappreciated year overall. Uh, that was I was more bothered by that than Connor McDavid not in a period of five ballots. Um, but that's neither here nor there. That's so that touching on that as well. Uh, the Memorial Cup is going on, and tonight the is a, a pretty big game for the Hamilton Bulldogs as they take on the Shawinigan Cataracts. Uh, as the, uh, of course, last night we had a historic first ever three on three Memorial Cup overtime that Jackson Weeb had uh, scored in, scored that historic uh, goal there. And the Oil Kings came away with their first win in the in these playoffs with the overtime win over the St. John Sea Dogs. And so the Oil Kings are one and one and uh in this in this here they have two points though that's an overtime win for them the sea dogs are one oh and one and they have because they lose in overtime they get one point so that's another thing that is going on there uh four points so big game for hamilton and shawinigan hamilton has yet to win shawinigan one and oh and they have three points so remember in the memorial cup Three points for a regulation win, two points for an overtime win, one point for a overtime loss. So um, uh, Jackson Weeb with the big career win there for the Oil Kings, and that tournament will continue on. Um, The uh, in Ottawa, some news about as as well. Let's uh, touch on what's going on in Ottawa about the arena deal there in Ottawa. Uh, that has been a long, controversial situation in Ottawa with Eugene Melnick and where that arena is and the Canadian Tire Center is in Kanata, Ontario. I've been to Ottawa. I was uh, a couple times and it's not near any, it's not downtown and it's very tough to get to. Uh, so, but the National Capital Commission did uh, announce that the preferred uh there was a memorandum of understanding for the development of a major event center it's just what would be just west of parliament hill would serve as the senator's new home and also be com- uh, comprised of mixed use development and uh they hope to have a long term lease agreement in place by the fall of 2023 of course the senators have been playing in canada Can- Can- since 1996 So they don't want to get closer to a pretty underratedly lively downtown in Ottawa. you got Parliament Hill. You've got a bunch of other interesting little things down there. It's a really cool area down in uh, Ottawa. Ottawa is a really cool city. If you ever get a chance to go, go to Ottawa. It's a really cool city. Uh, So, but good opportunity there. And I think would help a, a thriving Ottawa Senators team. They have some stars they are looking up there as well. Uh, to Nashville we go here as well as uh, the Nashville Predators have offered an eight-year deal to Philip Forsberg uh, to remain. Of course, lots of questions going on about that. Forsberg is one of the one of the top-ranked free agents here heading into the, the free agency season uh, here in the thir- on July 13th. Uh, Poyle, David Poyle said he's not signing with us for anything less than eight years. Uh, he spent 10 years with the Predators. They're hoping that that makes it 18. Uh, he, he, of course, made six years, $36 million. So, uh, 
Poyo feeling confident about that. So something to keep an eye out for that. And the AHL Calder Cup right now. Game four will be tomorrow. The Chicago Wolves are leading the uh, uh, Thunderbirds, Springfield Thunderbirds, uh, two games to one. Wolves have won game two and three, six to two and four, nothing. Thunderbirds won game one in overtime, five to four. Those games are at on AHL TV and NHL Network to watch as well. But so that will be our news for today. Again, you can follow us all individually on Twitter. Sean Beardy, Canuck03, Tyler, T-N-O-B-L-E, Chris Schneids, S-C-H-N-A-I-D-Z, Devin Gordhow09, I am K-E-V-O-L-E, Shifts and Pucks on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, subscribe wherever you get your audio as well. Check us out on the Area 51 Sports Network. Thanks everyone for watching and listening. We'll talk to you all very soon. Bye for now.